Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for end of day, the 1st of June 2016. And what a day it's been as well. Certainly a lot of gyrations. Uh, please do visit tradesignal.com. Signals and market updates from leading providers uh, via www.tradesignal.com. And you can download the app on the Google app and the Avid Apple app store. Okay, a summation, basically. Um, it's been a an eventful day, a very eventful day, uh, a very strange day at that as well. Yeah, mainly because of the gyrations. Now, let's try and decipher exactly what's happening. Okay, so the uh, European markets themselves certainly close in the red, and that's mainly due to the fact that the Asian markets certainly close in the red. So certainly a follow-on from there. We had the USD JPY trading as low as one hundred nine. Uh, the FTSE is down 0.6 and the DAX and CAC also. You've had the Euro certainly bounce off the 1.1 level, so it was more of a yen strength and euro weakness type move, okay? Uh, or should we say euro strength, sorry? Uh, so as we all know, the inverted uh, uh, relationship with the euro going higher and equities going lower and vice versa. And we also know the yen move as well. So yen moves lower, equities go higher, and that's obviously the uh, QE... Uh, fund flow at present that's really the qe trade that certainly seems to be the the dominant theme right now okay in term in the market at present if i just bring up the chart the usd jpy and then obviously the euro usd as well uh, just bear with me whilst i just bring up the correct charts okay so the usd currently is trading at 109.5 and the euro 11 uh, 1.1160 so if i just bring up the chart of the euro usd first of all Okay, so if I bring up a 60 minute chart, and you can clearly see that we've certainly thrust higher. Uh, certainly a lot of gyrations here, certainly pushed higher here, and look at potentially threatening to go higher. And I did explain yesterday that was mainly due to the Euro Bund. So if I bring up the chart of the Bund, the daily chart, you can see that we obviously have held resistance, and the Euro obviously has reversed accordingly. So certainly quite an impressive move there on the 60 minute chart. But certainly the, once the Euro Bund starts to fall, we all know what's going to happen next. The euro starts to rise. So certainly a risk-off move is in the offing. Now, we also have the uh, yen chart. So if I just bring up the chart, the yen. Okay, USDJPY. Now, we've certainly had a lift, and that's obviously helping equities at the moment. But you can clearly see the USDJPY move from 111 down to 109. So almost a 240-bit drop. Bring up the four hour chart, the USD JPY. You clearly see that we are potentially into support on the USD JPY. And the market really has interpreted that on the back of uh, the actual uh, move by the uh, Mr. Mr. Arbe uh, in terms of his delayed uh, reaction of the uh, sales tax hike. And that obviously has caused concern and uncertainty and, and faith in the, uh, the actual government going forward and the lack of stimulus that he now has. Uh, the option to because obviously if he uh, if he if he forgoes the sales tax hike for the next two and a half years it's very unlikely for him to do or get any support for any additional QE. Uh, I think he needs to be elected in the fact that he's trying to balance the books whether it's fiscal or monetary, and certainly has caused a concern for himself and it, and it certainly is uh, problematic. Also, the economic data overnight didn't more or less come in line, but the market didn't react the way uh, everybody expected. Obviously, with the markets moving lower. A lot of the news had already been factored in, along with the China news as well, with it being included in the MSCI. Uh, following that, we've had weaker data overall from uh, Germany as well. We had weaker German data, although the PMI certainly beat in France and came in line for Europe. The UK PMI certainly beat as well, but that was overshadowed by the potential Brexit, so now Brexit concern and also the uh, downgrade of, of growth forecasts as well. The U.S. economic data certainly came in uh, with mortgage applications negative. Mix out of data, Red Book certainly beating expectations. U.S. PMI better. Market manufacturing PMI better. ISM uh, manufacturing PMI better. Prices paid slightly better. Construction actually came out weak though. And we had the dairy auction as well from New Zealand certainly coming out stronger. Now we had the Fed bait which later on. And we also have APR weekly crude oil stocks as well. Now, the other news that certainly is affecting the markets is the news with regards to uh, oil. Okay, oil, uh, initially the markets fell on the back of uh, the Russians downplaying and the Iranians downplaying any potential oil output freeze. 
and then we had an article thereafter which really did trigger the uh, short squeeze in the markets for OPEC sources cartel likely to consider new oil output ceiling on Thursday hmm interesting so certainly conflicting information and hence the reason why we've seen these dive gyrations in the actual market itself so very very um, like I said a stark contrast and very very problematic to say the least Okay, now in terms of the markets, now let's try and decipher exactly what's happening with regards to these markets and let's try and break it down. Okay, now in terms of the uh, technicals, let's just bring up the chart of stocks first of all. And you can see we've had quite a substantial flush from 3100 level down to this 3030 zone. So certainly indicating weakness uh, to a large extent. Now just bear with me one second. Okay, so yes, Euro USD certainly, um, oh, sorry, oh, Euro stock certainly indicating weakness. Daily chart at the moment again remains weak. The uh, 10 minute chart at present is indicating a potential base being built out of the 3020 zone. But from my perspective, the 3010 certainly seems to be in play. The reason why I say it's in play is because we've had weaker auto sales from GM, Ford, and Volkswagen as well, with it being down 70%. And given the fact that the euro usd obviously is starting to move higher that alone will be sufficient enough to send this market higher as well so bear that in mind okay now in terms uh i'll show up the uh, the actual market sorry the equities lower down to gap fill now in terms of the german dax let's just bring that up for you as well you do have some for some form of breakout here uh, attempting to move higher now with regards to the uh, volkswagen sales again like i mentioned you are looking at potential gap fill in the german dax as well with the euro potentially putting in a, a base a two okay now in terms of the german dax on the 60 minute chart let's just bring that up for you again that that uh h &S formation certainly has been hit and the market has moved higher but the unfilled gap at 10 0 50 remains so that certainly will be the target the french cac uh, again the french cac looks like it wants to close the gap below at 4 4 30 before it attempts to move higher uh, the 10 minute chart really is crying out for that gap fill at 4430 and that certainly remains a focus for now especially with weak economic data the FTSE itself certainly seems to have bounced off the 6150 zone where previous resistance equals support quite an impressive bounce on that as well although having said that given the brexit scenario and the concerns with regards to that also um, with regards to oil as well and the, and the uncertainty regarding that as well whether or not OPEC freezes etc etc uh, the 6150 will be the pivot support for now on the FTSE itself but you are looking at potentially weaker prices especially with Brexit concerns certainly increasing as well so again all eyes on the FTSE although the daily chart certainly has held at 200 MA which is at 6150 so quite an impressive thrust and support is seen at 6160 zone okay on the FTSE 100 so again all eyes will be on that okay so uh, it will be important as to which way the price of oil is to move or is going to move and then obviously the uh, the movement uh, with regards to brexit as well okay so certainly a summation there now the focus i think really needs to be on the nasdaq from my perspective the nasdaq is approaching gap fill with the nikkei down overnight by 1.6 percent that will always remain under pressure uh, you are holding resistance at the 4525 zone so again you're looking at a risk off move lower which in turn should send the uh, FTSE 100 lower as well and global markets at that too so certainly bear that in mind and certainly it's one, one to uh, to keep note of again it will depend on the news flow that comes out from um, the uh, US session in terms of oil and OPEC whether there's a, a contradictory counter statement which obviously negates the uh, the cartel uh, coming to us some sort of output ceiling again a lot of uncertainty exists okay i think that's a market wrap uh, in terms of the european session my understanding would be that we are looking to potentially target that gap below given the weaker auto sales number okay and folks that's a wrap be sure to visit cfds.com with your trading needs goodbye now